Many of you are aware that you can import data from external databases using the data source feature inside of ServiceNow. Using data sources, you have a number of databases that you can choose from. To choose to import data from a database, you would need to go into a data source record and choose JDBC. ServiceNow uses the JDBC protocol to connect to external databases to import data. Once you select JDBC, go down to the format field and you'll see the out of box formats of databases that are supported through JDBC with ServiceNow out of the box. Now your organization may have databases that are not included in this list. Fortunately, you can install custom JDBC drivers from third party websites or whatnot and install them into your ServiceNow instance in a way that you can use those third party databases to import data just like you could through these standard out of the box databases. In this video, we're going to show you how you might do this and we will use a Postgres SQL uh, database server. The first step to installing a custom JDBC driver into your ServiceNow instance is to download a JDBC driver from the, either the manufacturer or some other trusted source for a JDBC driver. So we went to Postgres's actual website and did a search for a JDBC driver, and we see that there's one here, 42.2.12. So we'll go ahead and download that to our computer. Once we have that, we need to upload that into the ServiceNow instance. To do that, We filter on jar for jar files. And we see that there's the ability to upload jar files to mid servers. We're going to use that functionality to upload our JDBC driver. So we'll just click new. And really we can name this anything we want, but we want to be as descriptive as possible. I'm gonna put the version of the driver that I downloaded here in the version stream. And for the source, I'm going to mention that we got it from the Postgres website. And the description we'll just use as the, the name for this example. We'll go ahead and hit save. The next step is to attach that file that we downloaded from uh, Postgres website. So for me, I'll just drag and drop it onto this record. We'll let it update. And now we'll come back here. Now what we need to do is we need to configure our, our data source page to support this driver. We will go over to data sources and we'll just open up an existing um, example file from the data source table. And what we want to do is we want to add a new choice here for uh, the JDBC type. So I'm going to right click on format and I'm going to configure choices. And I will add Postgres here and I'll click save. Now what that does is it adds Postgres as an option here when we have JDBC selected. Now if we have file selected, JDBC is, or the Postgres isn't here because it was only valid with the JDBC type. All right, now that's not all we have to do because uh, values that we need to put for this Postgres SQL label. So let's, uh, can, let's show our choice list here. And we'll scroll down and here's that entry I put in for Postgres. And you'll notice here with the other databases that their label and their value are different. In this case, the value needs to be the class name for uh, the JDBC driver so that it'll know what class to use when it makes the Java call to form the JDBC database poll. So we'll do a quick uh, Google search to see what the class name is for the Postgres JDBC library. All right, I searched a couple of places through Google and found a pretty consistent use of, of this class string for the, um, the database driver. So I'm going to use that string in our choices format. So we'll come here, we'll double click under the value column and we'll paste that right there. Okay, now that we've set that, let's go back to our data sources. Now, part of JDBC, an important part of JDBC is something known as a, um, a connection URL. Now ServiceNow does not expose the connection uh, string field on the form by default. But if we go and show XML and search for connection, uh, you'll see that each database data source record has this JDBC uh, URI string that's required to make that connection. And each, each uh, database has its own format for the connection URL. So we need to look that up um, through Google and see what that connection string is for uh, Postgres. And then we will create a business rule to set that connection URL string 
whenever um, our data source is selected as a Postgres data source. All right, so I just searched for connection URL for the Postgres J JDBC, so we'll click here. And here is the basic format of what that Postgres uh, JDBC URL needs to look like. Now, there's other options as well, but this, for our purposes, will suffice. So I'm going to copy that. And now what we'll want to do is we'll come into our data source, and let's create a new business rule. All right, we're going to name the business rule, just set PostgreSQL connection string. We'll do advanced. We want to do this on insert as well as update. And we want to do this only on certain conditions. One condition is, or, or the primary condition is that we want to make sure that this is a JDBC data source. Not only is it JDBC, but we want to make sure that the format is PostgreSQL. Then beyond that, what we also want to do is, is our connection string is going to change whenever the server, the port, or the database name is changed on the data source record. So we'll add that as well. We do run the risk. For this example, this is just fine. Um, we might not catch it if we have the server name, database name, and database port already set. And then we go and change the form and save it. Then we go and change the form to PostgreSQL, uh, but that's gonna be very rare. And so I'm not going to worry about it right now for this example. All right, then under our advanced, we're, we're going to go ahead and build the uh, build the connection URL. I'll paste the, the connection URL format that we saw in the documentation, and then we'll go ahead and send this. All right, there we go, we'll hit submit. Awesome, let's go ahead and test it out. So if we come to our data sources, we can click new, and let's give this a name, testing my PostgreSQL connection. Uh, let's give it a, a import set table, just for us to dump things into the test. Okay, we'll set the type to JDBC, we'll set the format to Postgres. All right, to uh, to test this, I, I just did a, a quick search on the internet for any public Postgres databases out there. And I found a, a gene database that looks to be public. We have a host name, a port, and we have read access to that database. So we'll just test with that. So I'll copy the, the host name from that other record and, and place that in our server field. And then I'll also take the database name from that page and, and paste it in here. It looks like the port was 5432. All right, and the table that we want to search, we'll just search, we'll choose one that isn't overly big here. Uh, this information was on, on the web page for that database. And I'll go ahead and click Save. Now what we'll do is let's check the connection URL to make sure our business rule ran properly. As we look here, here's our JDBC connection URL and everything seems to look okay for me. So I think we're good to go. Okay, the next thing we need to do, and now that we verified the connection string is being set, uh, this is an authenticated database, so we do need to have some credentials, but that's also on the uh, that website to the public database. So we'll just copy those over here and paste those there, we'll save. And then let's go ahead and give it a test. We'll test load 20 records. All right, looks like we pulled in 20 records. We can actually go look at uh, the loaded data if we wish. And let's just click one of those one of those rows. And yep, here is here is the data from that database. So uh, essentially, it's it's really you got to know what you're doing. <laughs> you got to know where where to go to create uh, the ability in ServiceNow to connect to external databases for data imports. But as you can see, if you know where to go for those uh, items, it's really not an overly uh, time-consuming or complex task to add that additional functionality into your ServiceNow instance. Mm -hmm.